We're going to be heading into 5.6, sketching curves precisely. You are no longer going to need your graphing calculator. Who needs them when you can sketch the graphs on your very own? We're going to be using all the tools that we've learned in Chapter 5 to help us make these sketches of any given function. Alright, so these are just some of the oldies. Um, I'm not going to go really into these at the moment. We will be hitting these up as we graph other functions, um, but for now just remember y-intercepts are when x is equal to zero, um, you set that in your function and you solve for your y. x-intercepts, you're going to set y equal to zero and solve for the x. If you're looking at a rational function, that's when the top is equal to zero. Vertical asymptotes is when your function is some sort of x equals c line, so x equals 2, for example. And it's when you plug in that 2 into your original function and it's undefined. This is when you're going to have a vertical asymptote. Alright, now going into our new stuff. Um, the first derivative is something that we took a huge look at in terms of what it told us about our function in this chapter. And exactly what the first derivative tells us is where we had the relative extrema, so in other words, the peaks and the valleys. And then it also tells us where we have increasing and decreasing interval. When that first derivative is equal to zero or, uh, or undefined, that's when we have a critical point. So if you had, for example, um, let's say a value 2, and at f prime of 2, um, it equals zero or undefined, then at x equals 2, we had a critical point. Okay, and um, all we would have to do is take that value 2, plug it back into the original function, that c comma f of c or 2 comma f of 2, and then we would have had a relative minimum or maximum bound. Um, another thing that we, we really looked at with the first derivative is if the first derivative is positive, then that tells us our original function is an increasing interval. If that first derivative was negative, um, that's when we would have a decreasing interval in our original function. So that's where I set up a sign line, and I would mark my critical points that I found, and then test points for if they were positive or negative. Given what the first derivative tells us, and how it relates to the original function, what I just want you to observe is, let's say we were looking at an original function like this. I'm going to go ahead and sketch what the first derivative would look like, um, based off of just knowing everything I, I know from this. So I'm going to go ahead and locate my critical um, points, so in other words my relative extrema, the x values at which they occur. Um, I have a negative 2 that I'm going to mark on my first derivative function. Um, what that would look like is at f prime of negative 2 we would get 0. Right here at f prime of positive 2 we would also get the derivative equaling 0, so um, there we have them. And then what I'm just going to go ahead and translate is, I know that all of these values from negative infinity to 2 were increasing, it, it was on an increasing interval in the original function, so that means it was positive for the derivative, so I'm going to draw something like this. Um, and then right at that critical value of x equaling negative 2, it switched from being increasing to decreasing, so therefore on the first derivative it was from positive to negative. I don't even know how far down this will go, but I do know that I have to make my way in turn um, because at this next critical value, x equals 2, um, that's where it's going to cross from being decreasing to increasing on the original function, so from negative to positive on the first derivative. So I didn't require you to ever graph the first derivative, but what I did require you to do is set up a sign line. So what you would have had to do was mark these critical values on the sign line, test a point somewhere over here um, into your first derivative, and if it was a positive number, that's when we knew that it was going to be an increasing interval. If it was a negative number, like any of these down here would be, um, when you tested it into our f prime of x function, um, then you would have known it was a decreasing interval on the original, um, and then likewise positive, it would be an increasing interval. Overall, your sign line would have looked something like this once you had t put in those critical values and then tested points within those intervals. Um, that's what you would have gotten a plus, a negative, and then a plus, and then how that would translate was increasing, decreasing, increasing.
All right, the next thing that we're going to look at now is the second derivative. And what does that tell us? Well, the second derivative has everything to do with concavity. It will tell us the point of inflection. That's where f prime of, um, f prime of x, or whatever kind of x value that you found, um, would equal 0 or undefined. So at that x equals, for example, 2, if that were to make our second derivative 0 or undefined, that's where we have an inflection point. And that inflection point is going to be the point at which it's possible that it's going to switch from concave up to concave down. In the second derivative, if it's positive, it's concave up. And if the f prime or double prime of x is equal to negative, that means it's concave down. We're going to make the connection now that draws the original function to the second derivative. Um, and once again, what we're interested in is with our original function, just viewing it right now and understanding this visually, is that right here, this is where we have an inflection point. It is the part or the, that x value at which our function changes from concave down to concave up. So I'm going to go ahead. That's where f double prime would equal 0. So at x equals 0, whoops, at x equals 0, f double prime would equal 0. Okay, so then I just want you to realize is on our number line, had we drawn something like just our regular sign line, um, here is our inflection point 0. Um, looking at our original function here, um, typically we would have been working backwards and finding out, all right, what does f double prime of, for example, maybe negative 1 look like? And what we would find is that it was negative. How do I know? When I look back at my original function here, it was concave down. So remember, the second derivative, if it's negative, it associates with the first, uh, the original function as concave down. Um, any point that I would have tested to the right of 0, it would have been coming out to be positive because, once again, we have concave up. So something like this would be the, the function's second derivative look from negative to positive. Um, and there we have it. All right, so original function, first derivative, second derivative. This has everything to do with the critical points and the increasing and decreasing intervals. This has everything to do with the inflection point and the concave up and the concave down. All right, the last thing that I would um, like you to look at is the limits at infinity. Um, this has to do with the horizontal asymptotes. I'm not really going to go into this one as much for the, the graphs that I've been looking at. Um, but this is something that we're going to also have to take into account as we work through these homework problems. And this is everything that we have to consider. And then zooming in, what we have are the oldies. We're going to have to look for the, the intercepts and the vertical asymptotes. We know how to do that from um, last year and a little bit of this year with review. We're going to have to look at the first derivative, the critical points, and the, the relative extrema that come out of that. And then we're going to have to look at the second derivative, which has to do with the conca concavity and the inflection points. And then finally, the horizontal asymptotes that have to do with the limits at infinity. All right, so now that we've outlined all of the tools, including the oldies and the new things that we've learned, we're going to look at number eight. And the um, this is on page 360. Its directions are to analyze and sketch the graph of the function, label any intercepts, relative extrema, points of inflection, and asymptotes. So what I'm going to first do is find our oldies, which are going to be the y and the x-intercept. So once again, for the y-intercept, what we need to do is we're asking ourselves, where does this cross the y-axis? So we're going to set 0 equal to 0 in our original function and solve for the y. And what we're finding is this is going to just be y is equal to 0. So when x is equal to 0, y is also equal to 0, so we've just found the y-intercept. Also, we're looking for the x-intercepts. Um, this is going to be when the overall function is equal to 0, so when y is equal to 0. And we're going to solve for our x. Um, but what we really need to understand is this rational function will equal 0 when the top equals 0. So when x is equal to 0, that's when this whole thing will be equal to 0. So not surprisingly, we find that this is also an x-intercept. And then finally, I'm going to look at our vertical asymptote. This was also part of our oldies. And remember, the vertical asymptote 
is a value for x that our function could never cross because it's a, it's a value in for our x that would make our function undefined. So when we look at this, we're actually going to be interested in when is the bottom of our function equal to 0. So I'm going to set x squared plus 1 equal to 0. Um, solve for the x. And what you're going to find here is that the square root of negative 1 is not a real number. So therefore, there are no real numbers that would ever get us an undefined. So we have no vertical asymptotes. So I'm just going to write none. Alright, so I am going to go ahead and graph some of these key points that we have found. I'm going to label my x-intercept and y-intercept that happen to be at the origin, so they are a point in common there. And then we're also going to have no vertical asymptotes. So, so far I've established one key point of this entire function. I'm going to go ahead and move this up. I'm going to put it next to on my wall of items that we needed to go through. I'm going to put it at this oldie spot right here. So after I've established those three key um, characteristics, I'm going to move down to my first derivative and see what my first derivative has to say. So I'm going to be looking for my extrema, basically, and where there's increasing and decreasing values. So now that I'm looking at the first derivative, what I'll have to do is derive my function. So I'm going to get y prime, which is also, or which can also be notated as f prime of x. What I'm going to be doing is finding my critical values, and that's going to be when the top is equal to zero and when the bottom is equal to zero. So off to the side here, I'm going to find out when does it equal to zero. Well, it's going to be when this right here is equal to zero. So, so here is one of my sets of critical values that I'll have to look at. And then also, Another set of critical values will be when the bottom is equal to zero, so x squared plus one, so in other words when it's undefined. And I hope you can see we're going to end up in the same type of situation as we were before. This will never occur. There is no x value at which the first derivative will be equal to undefined. Um, so these are really all that we're concerned with. I'm going to first set up a sign line. Um, and it's just going to be the f prime of x sign line. I'm going to mark my critical values. And what I'm going to go ahead and do is just test in points. I'm, I'm going to test in a negative 2 here and plug it into my derivative. So f prime of negative 2, and I'm going to calculate that out. So on the top, let's see. I'm going to get a negative over a positive, which ultimately is negative. So here, well, I have a negative. All right, and then I'm going to check out, I'm going to test, just test in zero, f prime of zero. Uh, what does that equal? On the top, I'm going to get a positive. On the bottom, I get a positive, so this is a positive. And then finally, f prime of, let's try two, I'm going to get a negative overall. So we have a negative. So what this tells me is that I have a negative to a positive. So my original function is going to start decreasing um, from negative infinity to negative 1. And then it's going to change to be increasing. So this point right here is a relative minimum. Negative 1 comma is going to be a relative minimum. I will actually have to find out what is that y value by plugging it back into my original function. So when I do that, I'm going to get negative 1 over 2, so I get negative 1 half. And then finally here, um, this tells me that I went from positive to a negative, so it was going up and then it started decreasing, so I have a relative maximum. So I know at 1 comma, and once again I'm going to have to plug this in to my original function, but I'm going to have a relative max at the value y equals, and then 1 over 1 squared plus 1, so just positive 1 half. So I'm going to go ahead now, move this up to my second derivative, or my first derivative. So I've moved down the line, um, of all the things that we looked over in our lesson. Um, I've moved down and I found my relative minimum and maximum by using my first derivative. And so I am going to mark those. Negative 1 comma negative 1 half. That was going to be a relative minimum is what I said. And so over 1 
up one half. That's a maximum.